we shall commence this module by discussing the concept of fera the term fera represents an act to modify the law concerning the certain restrictions regarding the different types of payments transactions in foreign exchange and securities and certain dealings that incidentally influenced the foreign exchange i repeat the foreign exchange and import export of a currency the purpose of this modification is to sustain the foreign exchange resource of the country and its procurement and utilization which are considered essential for the economic development of the country it has been witnessed earlier that the reserve bank of india forced the american transnational corporations coca cola and ibm to cease their functions in india which are renowned in their respective areas for not complying with the provisions of the foreign exchange regulation act popularly known as fera act of 1973 besides these there are other 52 firms which also wound up their operations in india this obviate the likelihood of any alterations in fera which puts focus on the self reliance rather than the fascinating foreign capital and giving them permission to exploit the country there was another declaration exhibiting the determination of government to implement the fera indicating that they were against any liberal policy towards the foreign capital foreign exchange regulation act that is fera was constituted as legislation passed by the indian parliament in 1973 by the government of indira gandhi this act is applicable to the whole of india which means it also relates to the citizens of india residing outside india and to the various branches and agencies outside india of companies or bodies corporate registered or incorporated in india rationale of fera it was felt to introduce fera by the government when india was facing the crisis and foreign exchange reserves of the country were insufficient as it is known that the human wants are unlimited but country did not enough foreign exchange reserve to meet their demands thus it arises a situation to execute fera on the supposition that whatever foreign exchange earned by the indian residents would correspond to the indian government this would further be collected by the reserve bank of india therefore the rationale lying behind fera was to assist the rbi in preserving the exchange rate stability to maintain the foreign exchange reserves and to administer the foreign business in india after studying this module you shall be able to familiarize with the concept and rationale of fera figure out the objective of fera and its implementation understand an evaluation of fera understand the need to switch from fera to fema know the major provisions of fema moving on to discuss the objectives of fera and its implementation the objective of fera is not only about regulation but mainly about preservation of the foreign exchange reserves and their proper utilization it may be said that regulation of foreign capital is also one of the major objective of fera supportive evidence has been presented before the joint parliamentary committee by the officials of ministry of finance regarding the replacement of the earlier fera act of 1947 by the new one this has been carried out to deal properly with three main facets to regulate foreign capital in india to regulate employment of foreigners in india and to enforce the provisions regarding the foreign exchange leakages making it stringent for the purpose of regulating foreign capital there is need to understand the foreign corporate sector in india which consist of branches of companies 
incorporated abroad and companies incorporated in India but controlled by the foreigners. In order to separately regulate the foreign companies, proper distinction should be made signifying the distinctive features of both the Indian companies and the foreign companies. This would imply another objective of FERA in regulating the foreign companies. FERA consists of total 81 sections out of which section 29 is considered relevant. This section requires that all non-banking foreign branch companies and rupee companies with 40% equity to take permission of RBI so as to carry out their operations. These operations signify either the purchase shares or take over fully or partly by any undertaking engaged in performing functions, whether of trading, commercial or industrial nature. Implementation of FERA Foreign Exchange Regulation Act that is FERA finally came into existence on 1st of January 1974. As per this act, 881 foreign branch companies and rupee companies have got RBI approval to continue with their business in India. Dilution of the foreign equity was a major issue under this act. It was mentioned in annual report 1977-78 that dilution of foreign equity is not necessary in 321 cases. 68 companies were already earmarked with the foreign equity. Some companies were directed at diluting their foreign equity to 74%, 50% or 41% depending on the nature of activities they performed. Initial performance was not satisfactory and after that FERA has been accelerated. Afterwards, RBI invited the proposal for equity dilution from 1975 after accepting the applications. Then RBI took one step forward in investigating these applications and from 1976 onwards initiated giving permissions. Thereafter, cases were referred by FERA committee consisting of the secretaries of the five government departments, economic affairs, industrial development, commerce, science and technology and company affairs. This procedure of inviting applications, investigating and further reviewed by the FERA committee was a time consuming process. As RBI permission is requisite but sometimes RBI showed its failure to take actions instantly especially in the cases where TNCs were involved. RBI usually go through a long procedure in finalizing the cases and does not remit the latest order unless notified by the higher political authorities. IBM is an important instance. Initial proposal of IBM was submitted in June 1974 and its transformation took place in April 1976. FERA committee then took action for not allowing IBM any exemption with regard to the dilution of equity in September 1976. However, the company is driven by powerful lobbies to discuss various other proposals with the government. The final decision was taken only after September 1977 and that too required a categorical directive from Prime Minister. The most influential factor that was responsible for the slow implementation of FERA might be the poor response of the company. They indulged in some sluggish tricks so as to obtain the advantages in the circumstances emerging out of FERA. It was often felt that certain companies offended the RBI directives. Therefore, RBI further instructed the companies to state and submit their dilution plans within three months in July 1976. But few companies replied. It was reported that more than 100 companies had not diluted their foreign equity within the two-year period as directed by RBI. Though RBI has the legal power to take action against these companies, 
but it could not take any decision regarding this matter. Next, we shall discuss the evaluation of FERA. An evaluation of FERA was to examine whether the stronghold of foreign capital is presumably to fall over the corporate sector. FERA was implemented in such a way that it assured the wider circulation of shares of the companies. There were certain cases where there was less demand for the shares in the market. Companies were asked to look for the shares through the public issue of shares. Sometimes it was felt that oversubscription was a major problem faced by the company. There are various instances of companies whose shares were widely dispersed. For instance, Hindustan Unilever Limited ended up with 95,000 shareholders who is only largest joint stock company in, in India. It is known that the procedure of diluting the foreign equity is commonly known as the Indianization of the foreign companies. One of the representatives of the Bengal Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Calcutta provided supportive evidence before the Joint Parliamentary Committee on the Foreign Exchange Regulation Bill that 40% was an arbitrary percentage for governing the foreign control. This would not result in the Indianization of the foreign companies. However, RBI, who was also responsible for the implementation of the FERA, suggested that a company is said to be foreign controlled if 25% or more of the shares were held by the foreign company. However, it has been noticed that rupee companies whose foreign equity was more than 50% was declining over time. When FERA was not into existence, many foreign companies were in the process of diluting the foreign equity, thereby issuing the shares to the Indian public. They were doing this so as to get some benefit out of this. The crucial factor that explained the trend of increasing Indian equity participation in the foreign companies was the government policy. This policy adopted by the government asked the foreign companies to dilute their foreign equity as a condition for granting the industrial licenses. The worst part of diluting the foreign equity was the major role of the government in permitting the transnational corporations to impinge on those fields where small units can manufacture without the assistance of any foreign technology. It was further predicted that small units might terminate their operations. This would lead to the exploitation in the growth of large number of other firms. Therefore, some kind of deindustrialization is required to make room for the foreign capital in the name of FERA. Let us now understand the switch from FERA to FEMA. FERA has become the major obstacle in India's efforts to become global. Therefore, it was abolished on 1st June 2000. All transactions of Indian foreign exchange were directed under the FERA until June 2000. This was the legislative law which actually passed in 1973 when special importance was given to the foreign exchange because of its scarcity. By the end of 90s, it was felt that FERA was not successful in regulating the foreign exchange transactions and became a hindrance in India's endeavor to compete with other developing countries. Therefore, FEMA took the place of FERA, thereby aiming at relaxation of controls over the foreign exchange transactions. The launch of FEMA in place of FERA was validated thereby witnessing the improvement in the external payment position of the country since the amendment of FERA brought up in 1993. This was exhibited in the expansion of foreign exchange reserves and the assertiveness of the country in moving towards the external sector. The task of FEMA lies in diluting the existing restrictions on the foreign exchange dealings 
by taking the significant steps. Initially, the provisions of FERA were diluted. In the first provision, unlike FERA, the violations of the FEMA would not attract criminal proceedings. In the second provision, any contravention of the Act would lead to a penalty after the process of verdict up to twice the amount involved in such contravention. However, the penalty might be up to rupees 1 lakhs if the amount was not measurable. This made a shift from FERA to FEMA where the penalty in contravention was five times the amount and simultaneous initiation of criminal proceedings. Now we will discuss the major provisions of FEMA. The main objective of FEMA was to enhance and revise the law concerning about foreign exchange with the aim of facilitating the external trade and payment. This act also performed the task of promoting the development and upliftment of foreign exchange market in India. FEMA also applied to whole of India that is to all branches, offices and agencies outside India owned or controlled by a person who is a resident of India. Major provisions of FEMA are as follows. First, without the approval of the RBI, no person can transfer any foreign exchange to any person not being an authorized person, make any payment to any person resident outside India or impose restrictions on the current account transactions. Second, no restriction would be imposed by the Reserve Bank of India on the drawing of foreign exchange for payment due on the account of amortization of loans or depreciation of direct investments in the ordinary course of business. Third, a person resident in India is not allowed to transfer or issue any security unless an exemption has been provided in the act or regulations made under the permission of the Reserve Bank of India. This act defines a person resident in India, a person residing in India for more than 182 days qualifies to be a resident. Fourth, a person residing outside India or a branch, office or agency in India of a person outside India is not allowed to transfer or issue any foreign security unless directed by the RBI of India. Fifth, the RBI can restrict any borrowing or lending or deposits in the foreign exchange in whatever form called between a person resident in India and a person resident outside India. Sixth, restrictions has also been imposed on export, import or holding of currency or currency notes. Seventh, there is a prohibition by the RBI on transfer of immovable property outside India other than a lease not exceeding five years by a person resident in India. Eighth, Reserve Bank of India also put restrictions on the acquisition or transfer of immovable property in India other than a lease not exceeding five years by a person resident outside India. Ninth, export proceeds relating to the goods and services are expected to be realized within a period of six months from the shipment date. However, in the case of proceeds relating to the warehouse established abroad are required to be realized within 15 months from the shipment date with the approval of the Reserve Bank of India. Now, we will discuss that the change over from FERA to FEMA has achieved the objective of the policymakers or not. The scrap of FERA showed an important change in the behavior of government toward the foreign capital. FERA was the means for the government to regulate the foreign capital for the development of the country. However, FERA was declared fragile due to the dilution of equity. The dilution of foreign equity did not imply diminishing control of the foreign investor 
over an enterprise. The reality was that even with a less than majority stake in the holding, the foreign investor was successful in controlling the enterprise because of the wide dispersion of the numbers of shareholders. This purpose of the foreign investor was proclaimed validity in US Department of Commerce documented before the establishment of FERA. Some rules had come up stating that some foreign firms found corporate control as an important condition to get an entry in the Indian market. In certain cases, they acquire 40% of the shares in the joint ventures. Realizing the objective of regulating foreign capital by reserving its sovereign rights in the absence of FERA revealed the rationale of FEMA. Though the introduction of FEMA signified its importance to facilitate trade and payments, but its relevance has been questioned in terms of improved condition of the external account mainly for two reasons. The first reason was stated as whatever claims that external payment situation was sufficient to benefit such relaxation of controls did not stand close scrutiny. Second, the global financial markets had experienced the chaos due to which the imposition of exchange controls was in favor of the policymakers in some of the distressed countries. Thus, it can be concluded that the timings of FEMA was not considered advantageous either in terms of relaxation of control over the foreign exchange transactions or in regulating the foreign investment. Moving on to discuss the FEMA, a step towards capital account convertibility. Capital account convertibility refers to the freedom of transforming the local financial assets into the foreign financial assets and vice versa at the market determined rate of exchange. Section 6 of the Foreign Exchange Management Act describes some components of the capital account convertibility. It is explained in such a way specifying that RBI has the right to specify certain capital account transactions for which the foreign exchange is freely available. Subsection 2 of Section 6 states that provided that the Reserve Bank shall not impose any restriction on the drawl of the foreign exchange for the payments due to the account of amortization of loans or for the depreciation of the direct investments in the ordinary course of business. There are certain points to be kept in mind. First, there must be an assurance that the interest of the international investors will be protected. This is the main matter of the importance stating that the current state of the multilateral negotiations aimed at deregulating the foreign investment. Second, the scope of convertibility will be widened if it is found that the loans are fungible. It is also known that proposed amendment has come up in the definition of a person resident in India. The person residing in India for more than 182 days would qualify to be a resident. This relaxation of controls that a class of residents would enjoy represents a definite step towards broadening the scope of capital account convertibility in the country. However, the Tarapur committee stated in its report that mostly the restrictions on the capital account transactions were imposed on the residents prohibiting them for utilizing the domestic savings to invest in the financial assets abroad. India's foreign investment policy basically focuses on minimizing the restrictions on non-residents investments which has been provided as an added dose of transparency by the policy of economic reforms initiated in 1991. It further implies that there is no obstacle on the investment by the non-residents in carrying out certain outflows. Significant progress has been witnessed at the country level because of the FEMA's initial step toward capital account convertibility. 
This is reflected in the following points. Capital account liberalization played a significant role in curbing the balance of payment crisis. Next, the liberalization of the capital account assisted in recovering the shortage of foreign exchange reserves in the country. Next, the capital account convertibility brought efficiency in the financial system. It is known that the capital account convertibility is imperfect without the fiscal policies and financial prudence. However, RBI and the government both have been very conservative during the whole process of liberalization. This in turn improves the efficiency in the financial system. Next, this will further enhance the development of securities market. Next, a new management regime has come up by the FEMA consistent with the emerging framework of WTO. Thus, global presence of the country and its relations with the trading counterparts are also on the progress. Now, we will summarize what we have studied in this module. FERA referred to as Foreign Exchange Regulation Act which was enacted in 1973 and finally came into existence on 1st January 1974. It is regarded as the scarce commodity due to scarcity of foreign exchange reserves. The purpose of FERA was to regulate the certain payments dealing in certain foreign exchange and securities, transactions indirectly affecting the foreign exchange reserves and the import and export of a currency for the preservation of the foreign reserves in the country. FERA was implemented in such a way that it assured wider circulation of shares of the companies. FERA has become the major obstacle in India's effort to become global. Therefore, it was abolished on 1st June 2000. Foreign Exchange Management Act known as FEMA replaced FERA and was passed by the parliament in 1999. Certain provisions of FEMA were defined which focused on the objective to initiate and facilitate the external trade and payment and to promote the development of the foreign exchange market. Realizing the objective of regulating the foreign capital by reserving its sovereign rights in the absence of FERA revealed the rationale of FEMA. The timing of FEMA was not considered advantageous either in terms of relaxation of control over the foreign exchange transactions or in regulating the foreign investment. FEMA has also stepped toward widening the scope of the current account convertibility in India.